So Jonathan, I'm, I'm really excited for the upcoming meeting in Jerusalem that's hosted by Professor Stephen Wexner. I think it's a, it's a real great opportunity from surgeons from around the region, around the world, to come and meet and, and listen to some expert speakers in a nice informal environment. Um, this year, of course, it's being held in Jerusalem, um, usually held in Fort Lauderdale. And I think by moving the location in these traditional type conferences, it means that you get a, a new cohort of delegate. And um, I think that can only be good for the meeting and certainly good for the delegates. It allows us to share expertise with different regions of the world. So I'm really quite excited um, going to Jerusalem this year um, in lieu of um, you know, Fort, Fort Lauderdale. So one of the key um, pillars this year of, of the meeting is fluorescence guided surgery and one of the days is dedicated to that and what we've found in recent years is that fluorescence really is becoming the surgeon's best friend. There are so many different ways it can be used. For us as colorectal surgeons the most obvious and, and most popular way of it being used has been that for determining bowel diffusion for example. And we're beginning to see increasing evidence that there is a, um, a benefit in reducing anastomotic leak. We still await longer term results and randomised controlled trials, but certainly the evidence so far would suggest that uh, using fluorescence decreases leak rates. But beyond perfusion of the bowel itself, I think fluorescence can be used in so many different ways in surgery, from identification of anatomy, biliary anatomy for example, and ureters, but the more exciting fields that we're slowly developing here at UCL as well is that of looking for pathology. So moving away from anatomy and physiology and now into pathology. So I could give a dye for example and that dye would go straight to the cancerous cells in the blood body highlighting what I need to excise in a far more precise way that we've not been able to do before. One of the things that we've seen in recent years is that the traditional model for holding surgical meetings is evolving. And I think where once you would have to often travel a certain distance, um, pay a registration fee, um, find study leave and time to get away from family, from work, I think that model is slowly changing now with the use of online materials and, and the use of technology platforms, online platforms. In recent years, we here at UCL, in combination with the AIS channel and Cleveland Clinic Florida, have been putting on a meeting that attracts, on average, 25 to 30,000 viewers live. And this meeting, there are no delegates. So what we do is we have faculty from around the world either sending in their recorded lectures or joining us here in London in a television studio environment. And we then put on a live broadcast. And it allows people from all around the world at whatever time they wish to watch for free. And it means not having to travel, not having to leave, leave work. And I think this de democrat yeah, democratization of the surgical conference, I think this is really the new shift that we're seeing. And of course, you will need to have meetings such as the upcoming meeting that we're having in Jerusalem and then in Chennai, where you have delegates attending. But of course, throughout the year, this can be interspersed with having these online um, meetings where one can get expert content without having the difficulties and the hassle of having to travel and pay delegation fees. So much of my work is, as a colorectal surgeon involves colorectal cancer. And I think the big improvements in recent years have been twofold, really. One is improvements in cross-sectional imaging and MRI so that we can plan our surgery more effectively. And two, the ability to perform these procedures in a minimally invasive fashion. Often we think of open surgery being the gold standard, but I think we've probably reached a case, certainly with colon cancer, where laparoscopic surgery is now the gold standard. And for many, they would also say that laparoscopic surgery is the gold standard for rectal cancer. Well, that may be a little bit more controversial. The new techniques of transanal total mesorectal excision and of course robotics which has been around for some time now are certainly being adopted more and I think without any shadow of a doubt this is where we're heading in the future. We're not going to be doing open surgery to the levels that we're doing now or straight laparoscopy in 50 years time. We're going to be using more, um, how should I say, smarter tools such as robotic platforms and such as image guided platforms but I think we're really beginning now to understand the potential of how to use these in a cost-effective, but also a clinically appropriate way.
It's important um, in surgery, particularly for young surgeons and those that are um, newly appointed consultant surgeons, to have a mentor. I think it can be difficult to, to traverse um, a career pathway on your own and having a mentor often gives you both that mental, emotional and, and sometimes even physical guidance that you need in how to, to, to get through that path. Um, in my career, certainly um, Richard Cohen, Stephen Wexner, Antonio Lacey have been very, very influential. They've been there when during times of difficulty, times of uncertainty. And I think it's important for all young surgeons or perhaps even for surgeons of any stage in their career to have a mentor, someone they can go to, that someone they can go and ask questions to when, when you're not quite sure or you just need some guidance. And that doesn't necessarily mean someone in your own institution. It may well be somebody that you respect and someone that you know from another institution. But it, but it is key in this, um, in this pretty treacherous world of surgery to have someone that you can um, rely on and someone that can guide you. So I think the work that EMG is doing is, is tremendously exciting. I think having another platform which has multimedia rich content for surgeons to go to as a reference point is certainly the way forward for, for, for the world that we live in. I think often surgeons would go to the library, pull through articles, look through textbooks, and that may be done only when the library is open. Perhaps the library is not conveniently located. And I think having an online platform whereby one can access a whole variety of content from experts all around the world, and having that at a time which is convenient to, to oneself, I think this is really the way that we're going. It, it, we're all time poor now. We have lack of time in theatre, lack of time to learn, lack of time in our social life. And I think having something which is on demand is, is certainly useful and, and actually essential for the working surgeon now. I think the work's tremendously exciting because it brings together a whole lot of experts from different fields. It allows the traditional open access journal model along with more multimedia content. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what EMG does in the next few months and years.